I team reporter Doug Wolf tells us tonight about one particular type of tanker that's very common in central Illinois that appears to have big safety issues. Doug? Marianne, trains moving hazardous materials make it to their destination safely more than 99% of the time. It's the small fraction that don't that is causing major concern. June 2009, a sheriff's deputy spots a washed out railroad bed in Cherry Valley, Illinois, near Rockford. A warning is sent to the Canadian National Railroad, but the message is not conveyed to an oncoming train hauling ethanol. 19 tankers derail with 13 puncturing, leaking ethanol and catching fire. One woman is killed, nine injured, damages are set at nearly $8 million. The National Transportation Safety Board in a March 2012 report cites the inadequate design of tankers known as DOT 111s. <laughs> DOT 111s make up 69% of the nation's tanker fleet. You can see them in central Illinois moving ethanol and crude oil. In recent years, DOT 111s have been involved in numerous catastrophic accidents. They have thin outer shells which are subject to rupture in derailments. Well, we panicked and called 911 first, and then they told us that we had to evacuate, so we started rounding up everybody in the neighborhood. We were taking a nap, and then all of a sudden we heard this big boom, and we ran outside and seen black smoke and then orange smoke. July 2013, Lock Megantic, Quebec, Canada. A train carrying crude oil derails and explodes, killing 47. The culprit, DOT 111s. It exploded, wiped out a town, wiped out a town. God forbid that ever happens again, and I don't want it to happen in America. DOT 111s crisscross Illinois, passing through populated cities and neighborhoods. Barrington Village President Karen Darch tells the I-Team the DOT 111 is public enemy number one. Every day that goes by, it's a kind of a ticking time bomb. We're just waiting for the next accident to happen. As far back as 1991, the National Transportation Safety Board looked at more than three dozen derailments, calling the DOT 111 a substantial danger to life, property, and the environment. After recent derailments, Senator Durbin is pushing the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, known as FIMSA, and other federal agencies to take swift action, possibly retrofitting the DOT 111s with shields and other safety devices. But if we start moving towards safer cars that uh, can't be breached and explode and cause damage, it's going to be a lot better for the people living near railroads. So we feel like there's too much foot dragging. FIMSA is taking too long to issue a rule and actually require the immediate removal of these dangerous DOT 111s. Decades of problems. The chance of an accident happening um, increases every day. So yes, it's taken too long. Something must happen now. For now, DOT 111s still rule the rails. Federal regulators will have recommendations in April as to how to handle DOT 111s. New tankers manufactured since October of 2011 already have improved safety features. They roll through the hearts of our towns and cities, carrying flammable ethanol and crude oil. They are the workhorse of the railroad industry. DOT 111 tankers like these screeching along the edge of downtown Decatur are in the crosshairs of regulators in the U.S. and Canada. The problem? DOT 111s have thin outer shells making them prone to rupture and explosion in derailments. Dozens have been killed even though the National Transportation Safety Board, as far back as 1991, called the tankers a substantial danger to life. Regulators are looking at retrofitting these old tankers with shields, either on the sides or at the front and back end of them. Since our last I-Team report on these tankers, there has been a frantic push to protect the public. The NTSB warned in April there could be a higher body count if action is not taken immediately. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox wants to move cautiously. We want to make sure that we're, we're attacking this issue with the right solution. And the worst thing we could do is to propose a tank car standard that is inadequate to the material that is being transported. In Canada, where 47 people died in Loch Meganic in a DOT 111 accident, 
5,000 of the tankers will be banned almost immediately. Thousands of additional cars need to be fixed. Must be phased out or retrofitted within three years if they're to be used for transportation of crude oil or ethanol. In the United States, Congress is demanding new standards for DOT 111s come quickly so rail companies know how to deal with the problem. We could have some certainty. Right now there's so much uncertainty. People aren't going to make the investments in safer cars and we're going to keep running these crummy 111s as they are and killing people. And we heard this noise. We looked out the, um, the window and we saw a giant fireball. The trains were burning. Two weeks ago, the derailment of an oil train resulted in evacuations in downtown Litchburg, Virginia. As the flames grew, I stood and watched it for a little bit, took a couple pictures, and then realized that this is probably a dangerous situation, especially when there were so many tank cars. Some of the cars were DOT 111s, some were not, raising questions concerning other tank car models. The railroad industry, represented by the Association of American Railroads, is calling for a closer look at tanker safety. The AAR believes it's time for a thorough review of all tank cars currently moving flammable liquids such as crude oil and ethanol. Five days ago, the Transportation Department ordered railroads moving 35 cars or more of crude oil out of North Dakota and Montana to notify states of the routes they are using to move those hazardous shipments. The department has also issued a safety advisory urging shippers to no longer use the older model DOT 111s. For the I-Team, Doug Wolf, WAND News.